What is going on guys, Vlad here with AsolusPLC.com. If you enjoy videos on PLC programming, HMI development, or any other application development for industrial automation, consider hitting this subscribe button down below on your screen. And of course, the notification bell to receive the latest videos that I will be putting out on this channel. Without any further delay, let's get into today's video. All right, so today we're gonna be looking at how we can integrate some analog inputs into our L24 Compact Logics PLC. And what I have next to me is the analog input card. This is a Allen Bradley compact IO card 1769-IF8. And it allows me to essentially absorb up to eight analog inputs and then process them within our program. So we're going to be first looking at the hardware side and then of course, look at the program. So without any further delay, let's jump right into it. And in terms of the hardware, so the first thing that you're going to notice is that the uh, this particular line of PLCs has this what's called the ant cap. So this is the portion on the right side, as you can see here. And it usually comes off with the little tab on the top here. So I'm just going to force the tab outside like so. And at that point on, I can just slide this entire module back or forth. So I'm going to slide it forward, remove that. And this is where that other card is going to come in. So here's the analog module. I can simply position it on top of the rails here. And as I slide all the way back, you will notice that there's also a matching tab right here on the top of the PLC. So that is going to have to be pulled into the PLC side. And at that point on, as you can see, everything is very solid. The PLC is holding that card of nice in place. And of course, the resistor cap still needs to come back because we do have this output port uh, and it is expecting other modules or this end termination of uh, resistors essentially. So here was here's what you have in this end cap, not a whole lot. But once you slide that in into the PLC, we can once again force that tab into the locking position. And at this point on, you have a PLC, which uh, features the digital inputs and outputs, but also has the analog card. Let's turn our head to the software and I will show you exactly how to add this analog card and how to see what is currently on it. All right, so here we are. Here's the latest and greatest program, which is currently running on that PLC. Of course, we are offline because it's usually easier to add modules like that offline and then downloading to the PLC. And you can definitely do it online for certain modules. Uh, but it is not always advisable to do so. So that being said, what we need to go into is we're going to scroll down to this IO configuration. And here we're going to find this 1769 bus, which is essentially the backplane of that compact logic PLC where our module resides. So within within the embedded IO is we're going to find those discrete or digital inputs and outputs. And that's pretty much predefined on the controller. So you have no way of uh, removing this or adding anything else. But the analog card is going to be part of what's called the expansion IO. And here, if we click, uh, if we right click that folder, we can select new module. And from the new module section, we can essentially find the module that we're looking for. And of course, um, there's going to be this module discovery utility here, but I've never had a good, um, good experience with that. It always seems to fail to find what's truly out there. So we're going to write in the number, which is the part number of that specific card. And you can usually find that number on the side of the modules that you're using. This needs to be accurate in order to work. So 1769 IF eight is going to be the card that I'm using, I'm going to hit this create button. And without too much delay, we should be able to give this card a certain name. So analog a in slot two. So of course, it treats the embedded uh, discrete IO as slot one. So we're going to go into slot two. And here we can just change this to be disabled keen. So we don't care about the revision. But usually these modules only have a single revision anyways. So that's going to be in the name, we're going to hit okay. And that point at that point on, we have a uh, embedded card. So from this pane, what you can also do is not only can you check the connection, but you can also configure your different inputs on the analog side. So this is something that we're going to talk a little bit more in a different video. But what I want you to notice is that you can definitely change the input range. Um, I guess we need to go online maybe with this before we can change anything. Let's see if we can download this program. So I'm going to hit download. 
to the PLC. Of course, this is a PLC that's not running in a production environment. So I am safely going to download this configuration, which only includes the new card anyways. So it shouldn't be too long of a process. Let's see here. And once the download is complete, we're, go, we're going to go back into that analog card and we'll see if we can change some of those values on the fly within the controller. And of course, those are going to dictate what kind of a sensor, first of all, you have. So if you have an analog input in terms of voltage, it's going to be a certain uh, setting. If you have an analog voltage in terms of current, you're going to have a different setting. So everything looks okay. We are going to go back into remote run. Let's double click this IO and see if we can now. So as you can see, by the way, this card is a current slash voltage analog input. So if I go into configuration, I should be able to, I'm not sure why it's, uh, okay, yeah. So maybe once we enable, then we can, if we enable all of them, I guess that will make it a little bit easier. But um, you have different options available to you. So minus 10 to 10 volts, zero to five volts, zero to 10, 4 milliamps to 21 volt to 5 and 0 milliamp to 20 milliamp. The most common that I've seen in my personal manufacturing experience is going to be 4 to 20, but I did see voltage ranges as well. Of course, you're going to have a filter, which uh, typically I don't change this specific value. And the format, depending on what you want to scale it in, you can use raw proportional, you can use engineering units, scaled for PID or percent range. Usually I leave this as is, and I wanted to show you where you'd find these values just uh, because uh, that might not be something that you're used to. But if you select this expansion IO, first of all, you might have this essentially closed down and you need to drag this up from the bottom here. And you will notice that the module has been defined as local to IOC. So I stands for inputs, two stands for outputs and C is for control. Let's go into the controller tags and we're going to scroll down to local two. And of course, we're, we want to see the values within the inputs. And here we have the channel data. So here the channel zero, of course, is reading minus 32,000, which is the full range of that integer. And then we have channel one data channel two, data channel three and so forth. And as you can see here, you also have a different tags. So they don't necessarily reside all within the C section, but they do reside in the input. And on C, uh, I believe, yeah, you have the, some alarm dead bands. So you have a lot more stuff coming in. But anyways, your data for the specific inputs that are coming in from your sensors are going to be coming in on this channel zero data, channel one data, channel two data. And we will look at this further on in the videos. But that's how you hook up uh, the analog input card and how you program the base uh, condition in order to be able to pull data from an analog device. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.